Today's video is brought to you by one of my favorite services, period, Audible. Audible is the home for audiobooks and spoken word entertainment. Here's how it works. You can visit the link in the description to get a free month of Audible. That free month gives you not only one title from their entire catalog, which you get to keep regardless of your membership status, but also a growing selection of included audiobooks, Audible originals, and more. I've got several months of listening time on Audible. I love the service. I use it sometimes while driving, sometimes while working. If you're a Star Wars fan and if you're watching my channel, you probably are. Pretty much every book is on there. Just a hint though, go for the unabridged, i.e. the full-length versions, and if you're looking for a recommendation, I would suggest Star Wars Brotherhood, which recently released, or if you want Legends, one of the original Thrawn trilogy books. If you want something that's not Star Wars, consider the Area X trilogy by Jeff Vandermeer, some of my favorite sci-fi. You can claim your free month of Audible by going to audible.com slash Eckhart's Letter, or by texting Eckhart's Letter to 500-500. That's audible.com slash Eckhart's Letter, or Eckhart's Letter to 500-500. On with the video. This is both simultaneously my most and least favorite time of the year. As a Star Wars fan, I'm so excited to see all of the new stuff we've gotten over the past couple of days and or trailers. Recently, right before I recorded this, a look at Star Wars Jedi Survivor, the Fallen Order sequel, and of course the first two episodes of Kenobi. As a quote-unquote creator though, it's not stressful, but you always have to be ready for whatever trailer releases, and when you've got kids like I do, it's hard to get away during the day. So, how we're going to do this is I'm going to give my quick impressions of the first two episodes of Kenobi today. I'll maybe at the end very briefly mention my thoughts on the Andor trailer. It was amazing and the Jedi Fallen Order stuff, but about an hour or half an hour after this goes live, I've also scheduled a longer stream where I'm going to talk in depth with my friend Corey, record an episode of my podcast Tap Calf Transmissions, and we're going to go over in great detail Kenobi and the other announcements of this week. But just for those who wanted something shorter, I thought I'd put together this video as quickly as I could. All right, so let's talk about Kenobi, and this was, I thought, definitely a good start with the series. Me personally, I am very thankful that they decided to go with the first two episodes instead of just the first episode. I think people definitely would have been left wanting somewhat had it ended after that first 40 minutes, especially where so much of the first episode was that awesome flashback and more. It truly felt like a continuation for me, at least of episode three, and most of that was amazing. There were, I think, maybe some, I'm not going to call them necessarily weaker parts, but less focused parts, and that again felt very prequel like to me so it had both the highs and the lows of the prequels but as someone who really likes the prequels especially episode three for me that still ends up delivering a good product and the things i liked were as i mentioned the connection to the era i thought obi-wan kenobi's acting was great i thought the locations were interesting although some of them like tatooine didn't look quite as i guess well made or well put together as they didn't say the mandalorian or certainly the Book of Boba Fett. Special effects overall for me weren't quite on that same level, although other places like Alderaan looked pretty much perfect. And again, that may be partially the difficulty of having to match the aesthetics of a movie that came out in 2006. Like, some people probably would complain about Alderaan looking somewhat cheesy, but that's how it looked like in Episode 3, and I love the continuity there. It went for that early 2000s look that I thought was great. Well, Obi-Wan Kenobi's acting was great, or Ewan McGregor's acting, rather. I thought some of it was a little more dis jointed. I really liked young Leia. She was cute. She was awesome. Sometimes the Inquisitors didn't quite bounce off each other perfectly. Just overall, sometimes I think maybe the scenes needed a bit more work. There was that chase scene a lot of people are pointing to. Some of the other scenes, like on the rooftop, felt a bit awkward. But these are generally small complaints, and that's almost why I'm bringing them up at the beginning here, because overall, the show was definitely what I'm expecting. And Disney Plus has, of course, continued the tradition of marketing the hell out of the first two episodes. Almost everything we've seen so far comes from those first two episodes. So where we're going after this, I have really no idea. Starting from the very beginning, though, I really like the idea to go with a flashback, but also a different perspective of something we've seen before. Pretty clear that one of these children has to be Reva, the Inquisitor. They, she's called a sewer rat or a gutter rat at some point by the Grand Inquisitor, who, yeah, he looks a little funny, by the way. His eyes were a little better than he has been in the teasers, but anyway. She's called a sewer rat most likely because she'll be discovered by the Empire hiding out in the sewers of Coruscant with the other Padawans. I just want to note too, Disney was really in a lose-lose situation when it comes to re 
releasing this because obviously the scenes at the beginning is a kind of uncomfortable callback to the events of this past week. Don't want to say too much more about that, but just acknowledge it's kind of a difficult situation there. Overall, though, I thought Obi-Wan's life on Tatooine was pretty much as expected. I'm excited about the prospect of him connecting with Qui-Gon at some point. I love the fact that he's trying to do so now. He's calling out for help and basically being rejected. Otherwise, though, the Tatooine scenes were fine. I like the fact that he's got a job cutting away this giant fish that must be a relic of Tatooine's old seas. Not really a huge fan of him already encountering another Jedi, but it is what it is. The conversation with Owen was great just like it was with the previews, and I'm curious to see kind of his guardianship of Luke continue. The Skyhopper touch was really nice as well. I already mentioned that I thought Leia was a good choice. The Alderaan scenes were really cool. I think it was a really smart way to have to bring Obi-Wan out of retirement. Though to be fair, I'm still not necessarily sure how the Inquisitor realized that Obi-Wan would come out of hiding when it came to Leia, but I'll have to rewatch and maybe see if there's something mentioned there. On the note of the Inquisitors, I already mentioned how I felt like there was a bit of awkwardness between them. I don't think that can only be tied to Reva. I think there's just naturally not the flow yet that you might expect, but part of that is also reflected in the relationship the Inquisitors have. I wasn't expecting them to have this sort of adversarial relationship with each other. I think that's a really interesting touch where obviously Reva is a little more hardcore than some of the others. She's much happier to start slaying civilians or whatever necessary to kill Jedi when others kind of want a lighter touch. As we're going through episode one, I also want to give a brief shout out to Jimmy Smits. I think he's always been amazing in his role. I'm so happy they got him to come back for this, although not really a shocker there. I can't really decide whether I like episode one or episode two more. I was actually a little surprised he got off planet so early. I was expecting he would at some point, but I was also ready for a show that was maybe a bit slower and a bit more contemplative. And episode two made it pretty clear that's not really what we're going to be getting. There were two parts of this episode that I thought were really clever. First was the fake Jedi scamming people out of their money. That makes so much sense, especially at this point where a lot of people don't even really remember what the Jedi were, that they're just sort of these mystics. Someone stepping in and having a closing shutter uh, machine set up and pretending to be a Jedi. That's just awesome. And of course, the other really cool scene on this planet was the veteran clone trooper on the street. One thing that I pointed out in a video I did for X Clips, and I've seen other people reference as well, is the fact that this does appear to be a clone of the 501st, i.e. of the battalion that was often with Anakin. So that clone very well may have recognized Kenobi. Kenobi may have recognized that clone, although obviously that's a bit more difficult. So he's putting himself out there when he goes up to that clone, and I really appreciate the way that he still gives him money. You know, he recognizes that, as with everyone else, the clone is essentially a pawn in a much larger game that Sidious has been playing. I enjoyed the relationship and the banter between Obi-Wan and Leia. Leia is just a smaller version of her older self, which some people might see as cheesy, but I kind of like. I will say, though, the action for this episode is probably the weakest part. The corridor scenes where they were fighting were great. The rooftop chase was a little less strong in my opinion, but those are some pretty small complaints overall. I think this series is definitely going to shine when we get our lightsaber combat. But yeah, overall I'm fully invested in this universe in this story. Ewan is back to his Kenobi self already. He's definitely pulling from Alec Guinness in the role, and I think that works perfectly where he's sort of at a midway point between himself and Alec. Thought Flea was a lot of fun. It was sad to see him get chopped up by the Inquisitor but yeah, we'll have to see what the rest of the series does, but I'm super on board. As I said, it feels like a pretty natural continuation of episode three, which is one of my favorite Star Wars movies. This video is getting a bit long, so I'm not going to spend too much time talking about Fallen Order and Andor. I will say I did a short coverage of Andor on my Clips channel, which you can find linked down below. I thought that trailer was incredible. That instantly moved Andor up to my most anticipated shows, where before it was on my radar, but not much more than that. Coming very soon after Kenobi ends, and it's going to be a long season. Season. So that's great. The Fallen Order 2 trailer, or as it's called, Jedi Survivor, I thought was amazing as well. Going to try to get a video of that done for X Clips, but I'm sort of running against the clock here, so we'll see. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. As always, be safe, have a good one, and may the Force be with you.